Number 44, Rashad Kent. At center, a 6 9 sophomore from Mercersburg, Pennsylvania. Number 55, Kareem Wright. And at the guards, a 6 2 freshman from Brooklyn, New York. Number 3, Sherrod. a six-foot sophomore from Middletown, New Jersey, number 22, Todd Billet. Head coach of the Scarlet Knights, Kevin Bannon. And now for the Hofstra Prize. And forward, a 6'7 senior from Brooklyn, New York, number four, Roberto Gittins. Forward a 6'5 senior from Brooklyn, New York, number 21, Norman Richardson. At center, a 6'9 senior from New York, New York, number three, Greg Springfield. And at the guards, a six foot senior from Oyster Bay, New York, number 12, Jason Hernandez. A 6'3 sophomore from North Bergen, New Jersey, number 22, Rick Apodaca. And go to the pride, and Jay Wright. So there you have it, our Foot Locker starting lineups. And before we get things started, let's send it over to Mike Hill. Mike. All right, thanks a lot, Kenny. The Knights off to a 7-2 star, but with the exception of Florida, they really haven't played a quality opponent this season. That's why Kevin Bannon said this game is very important for his team because he calls Hofstra a Big East caliber-like opponent. And he said that the way they do against this team and the way they do in this tournament might determine how they do in Big East play. He said, Bannon, what we get here are good opponents away from home. It's something we better get used to because it's going to be that way when Big East play starts. You got a taste of that against the two-time defending champion in Hofstra tonight at you guys. All right, thanks, Mike. For Kevin Banna, this is third holiday festival. And there's Norman Richardson, Jeff Greer. Richardson, the MVP each of the last two years. Incredible run. And as we pointed out earlier, it was ACC, Atlantic 10. This year, Big Ten's in the mix. Uh, some good clubs, some good leagues represented. Kareem Wright. Greg Springfield on uh, the opening tap, and it is controlled by the Scarlet Knights. Jeff Greer, Rashad Kent, Kareem Wright up front, Mike Sherrod, Todd Billett in the backcourt. This is Greer, guarded by Richardson. Billett out near half court. Mike Sherrod over to Todd Billett, 10 on the shot clock. Kareem Wright thought about shooting, gets it back out to Billet. Shot clock down to five. Wright did not control, but it's knocked out of bounds. Looked like Richardson, but the official, Ray Perone, says it was deflected out by Kareem Wright. Butker's that time really probing the defense, uh, not anxious to put up a quick shot. Hofstra stayed uh, very solid defensively, and it looks like uh, Butker's also going to go man for man. There's uh, an illegal screen. John Hughes making the call right in front of him. Roberto Gittens called for the offensive foul. When they can. Hofstra extending the defense. Sherrod into the corner for Greer. Billet from three off the front of the rim. Kept alive by Sherrod. Billet will try it again from straight away. Wow. And Kareem Wright is called for the offensive foul. <laughs> yeah, but when he gets called for one, it's, uh, he gets his money's worth. Very strange, uh, Bill. It didn't. The first release didn't look good, and you knew when he got the ball right at the top. He just, I was getting ready to say, you don't give this guy two chances, and he didn't even get iron with the second. Very strange. Two uh, excellent looks. Well, I'm leading the Scarlet Knights in scoring at just under 17 points per game. Richardson watched by Greer. Going off the screen, set by Gittins. And on the shot clock, Richardson from three, 
Jones off to a good start. Yeah, this has been crucial. He's been in a little bit of a slump, as we pointed out, in, in hard starts. He's been a great second-half player throughout his career. He needs to play two halves tonight. Whoa! Sean Kent all alone underneath. Boom! That was about six under Richter scale. I'll tell you, they got two beefcakes underneath, and Flyers out front. Good-looking team physically is Rutgers. Kent, 6'6", 265, right, 6'9", 285. Hernandez answers on the other end. Uh, tough kid to transfer from New Hampshire. He's, uh, well, Jay Wright said it best. He's heart and soul trying to take over for Speedy Claxton. And uh, I won't say they haven't missed a beat, but this Hofstra team is every bit as good as last year, in my opinion. A little double team, dribbling out. We'll see that all night long. Hofstra will take those opportunities to just make a track, to set a double team. And they don't come with any real methodology except uh, uh, the opportunity to make a play. And uh, so occasionally, and Rutgers has the personnel to make them pay, and that time they did. A holding foul called on Mike Sherrod is first. Just to clean up that point, uh, Jay Wright gives his uh, players defensively what they call a calculated risk. If they see an opportunity to trap or double team, they can do it. And as we've already pointed out, they were burned on one, but percentage is normally with them. Hofstra leading 5-2. We've played just under three minutes. Rutgers now matching up. But they better know where number 21 is. And it's taken Hoster back a little bit. They looked uh, much more at ease attacking the man for man. Seven on the shot clock. Traveling is the call on Rick Apodaca. Apodaca called by his coach Jay Wright. A born scorer. Broke all the records over there in Jersey. And he's now been forced to play lots of point guard, which he did against St. John's very effectively. All-time leading scorer in Hudson County. Bill hey, Raftery. Bill Raftery had that record, didn't he? Wow. Certainly did. That stood a long time because he's old. <laughs> <laughs> I won't tell him you said that. Yeah, don't. He's very sensitive. The governor is very sensitive. Uh, you ever coach against Ref? When he was at Seton Hall, I was an assistant at Duke, yeah, and when he went through that tough time at Seton Hall. He's a heck of an announcer and a great player and is a good coach. Norman Richardson called for the last foul, his first. Hofstra leading 5-2, the early going. Sherrod bottled up, another offensive foul. Both teams trying to make a statement with their defense early. Nobody getting, nobody really getting good looks except Todd Billett got too early. The last guy, who drawing a crowd of white jerseys in there. Number two on Mike Sherratt. Three-point hostile lead. Here's Richardson. Norman Richardson. Boom. Now with five of Hofstra's seven points. Buying his third straight MVP in the ACAC Holiday Festival. Nobody has ever won three MVP awards. Richardson, the fifth player to win two. Now the steal by Apodaca, and he was fouled. Greer grabbed hold of Apodaca. Jeff Greer called for his first. Hofstra off to a good start. They lead Rutgers 7-2. You are watching the East Coach of the Hofstra Pride, Jay Wright. I think Rutgers is going to be a surprise team in, in the uh, Big East this year. They've got, they've got great guard play. And in college basketball, if you have great guards, they can carry a long way. Billet's an outstanding player. Greer as a senior is really stepping up. Uh, the freshman uh, from Roberson, Mike Sherrod, is an outstanding player. And they... Uh, can control a game from the guard position. We've got to be able to deal with them and their size on the boards, but also we've got to be able to control their guards and keep their scoring down. Well, Hofstra out to a five-point lead. We've played just over four minutes in this first half from Madison Square Garden. Penn State won the opener 65-52 over Princeton. Kevin Bannon now out of the timeout going to a matchup. 
Hostel doing strange things to it. Really overloading it. Gittins bottled up. Third Hofstra turnover. Greer from three. Gets the roll. That was soft. Well, you have to respect uh, Greer's slashing ability. He gets room on that three because he has such a great first step taking it to the hoop. Greer shooting 37% from three-point range. Foul called underneath on Kareem Wright. His second, the officials, John Hughes, Ray Perone, and Jim Haney. As we take another look at the Greer three. Feet together, shoulders square, and that ball went up at least 18 inches. It landed like a butterfly with sore feet. Lars Gruber, number 32, in the game for Hofstrup, and Eugene Dabney, number five, has checked in for Rutgers. Nice touch, Rick Abendaka hitting the three. He's only averaging nine a game, but uh, he just seems to get him when it kills you. Played extremely well in that win over St. John's. 14 points, six assists against the Red Storm. When they made him work for it, too. Billet, his third three-point attempt, he's 0 for 3. Yeah, he's looking around like, like there's a wind. I, you know, that's amazing. He's, uh, he doesn't appear to be hurrying. He's getting a good look. That's the third one. Guys with that scorer's mentality, though, he's not shy. It reminds me, it reminds me some of Bobby Hurley in that he's just not an impressive looking guy, but he's just he's very brazen, very bold, and uh, takes big chances and delivers. There it is, right back, right into the thick of it. Interesting that you mentioned Bobby Hurley. Bobby Hurley's brother, Danny Hurley, and Todd Billett's brother, Jeff, the former Rutgers star, both assistants to Kevin Bannon on the Rutgers bench. <laughs> they like to keep the good ones at home. Staying in that matchup is Rutgers. Hofstra leading by three. Apodaka steps inside the line. Abney strong on the boards. Neither team able to get in transition, and both of them like it. Billet guarded by Apodaka. Billet has the step. Dishes off underneath for Dabney. Dabney double teamed. And Rutgers will retain possession. Lars Grubler made a nice play from behind. There's another guy that stepped up big in that last win over St. John's. Big 6'8 kid gave him big body inside that they needed desperately. He has really improved. Kent pulls it back out. Kent on the shot clock. Offensive foul. It's number three on Mike Sherrod. Oh, the freshman. A freshman in his first garden experience just trying to do a little too much at too high a speed. And that hurts Rutgers because with him in the game, they really have two point guards, which opens things up, uh, especially for Billet on the perimeter. How many times have we seen that freshman who's playing real well comes in for that garden game and uh, just tries to do a little too much? Devin Bannon not pleased at all with the call. Watch, let's see. Pretty good call. Right in the chest. Sherrod replaced by number 24, Mike Thompson, who started the first three games this season. But has been replaced in the starting lineup by Sherrod. Danny Walker off the mark from three. Kept alive by Springfield. And Springfield is called for the offensive foul. And a timeout. Jay Wright really, really really upset with Springfield both teams it's like a demolition derby out there drawing charges and they're painful and a technical foul has been whistled on Rutgers coach Kevin Bannon he was still steamed about the offensive foul called on the other end against Sherrod well, I'm not saying they tried to make it up right in front of him but uh, the call got a turnaround I thought both were good calls you don't have to give the man with the ball a step, nothing. You just got to be in front and moving in the same direction. You can actually be moving and draw the charge as long as you're in front. You're entitled to that spot. Uh, 
I guess I'm surprised, Ken, by the low score so far. I have both of these teams uh, potent offensively. I guess we have to give credit to the defense. Well, over the first seven minutes, there have been five offensive foul calls in the game. Todd Bellett now taking over the point. Bellett oh, oh. could not hit, rebounded by Gublin. Danny Walker fake the three, sends inside for Grubla. That wasn't pretty when you shove it up the defensive player's sinuses, but he's fearless in there. Six foot 11, 270 pound sophomore. <laughs> Guess you can kind of do with it what you will. Hofstra leading by six. Scarlet Knights have some studs in there. Apodaca now on Billet. Good match up there. Hernandez coming back in. Billet's going to get a platoon of good defenders on him, especially with Sherrod in foul trouble. Rashad Kent threw the foul. It's number two on Greg Springfield. Neither team can really get out in transition. And especially for Rutgers with their perimeter players, that's when they're at their best. Rashad Kent, Bucky, ready for this? 32% from the line. And he's still averaging a double-double. And he is second in the Big East in rebounding. He shot 47% from the free throw line last year. This season down to 32. Look at his field goal percentage. He's uh, nearly shooting twice uh, the percentage from the field than he is from the free throw line. Maybe they just shouldn't guard him down there. Good Lord. Rutgers as a team only 57% from the line in their last game, the victory over Stony Brook. They shot 10 of 29 from the line. Yeah, that was a six point game. Nick McCarthy, boy, you talk about uh, the upset of St. John's by local teams. How would that have been, huh? In fact, at one point, Rutgers missed 12 in a row. Yeah, I mean, Christmas season and all, but you just can't be that benevolent. Richardson called for steps and a timeout. Just over eight minutes gone by in the first half. Hofstra leading Rutgers by six. New York Rangers hockey on MSG. Messier and the Blue Shirts are in Carolina to battle the Hurricanes after Geico Rangers game night, Wednesday night, only on MSG. On Sunday, January 7th, the Garden Ice will never be the same. In a charity event that's bigger and better than ever before. Super Skate 2001. Bring your family to see action-packed skill competition and a star-studded cast. All proceeds benefit NYR Skate and the Christopher Reeve Paralysis Foundation. To purchase tickets, visit the Garden Box Office or call Ticketmaster at 212-307-7171. Can't we all just get along? In your dreams. Let your voice be heard. Game Face, Thursdays at 7, only on Metro. The biggest thing that you notice from them is how much they laugh. It's kind of faster communication for them. Laughing, laughing, laughing. It's either a really funny language or they're a bunch of comedians. <laughs> that rubs off on the other guys, too. More angles, more insight. MSG is more than just a game. The Knicks are on Metro tomorrow night as they roll into the nation's capital to take on the aforementioned Washington Wizards, coached by Leonard Hamilton, previewing the action at 6.30 with MCS Canada Knicks game night. The Knicks and Wizards at 7 tomorrow night on Metro. John Gallagher and Eddie Caginelli, longtime Garden employees, our producer and director, searching fervently for cracks or divots in the board from the rather unpleasant bricks that have been hurled against it so far. I'd like to think they played a little defense, but not much. The highlight, smooth Norman Richardson nailed too quickly, but he has been covered up, and the quick fouls on Mike Sherrard definitely has taken some of the punch out of Rutgers. Sherrard on the bench with three personal fouls. Hernandez knocked it away from Billet. Boy, well, Billet's in for a long night, Ken, between Hernandez uh, coming at him and Apodaca. They're just going to platoon him. And both those guys can defend. Greer 
with Dabney, Billet, Thompson, and Kent. On the floor for Rutgers, 12 on the shot clock. Tough defense by the Hofstra Pride. Billet to a wide open Greer, but first, That's another right. offensive foul, the sixth of the game. Each team has committed three. I, you know, I don't want to mix sports in a metaphor, really, but it's more like okay. jackpot bowling. It's just guys go down the lane and uh, bodies fly, and it's a spare, it's a strike. Here's Billet now, makes the turn, goes right by Hernandez, and runs into the entire left side of the collapsing defense by Hofstra. The seventh Rutgers turnover, they have as many turnovers as points. Amazing. Richardson. Nice pass down low for Abdul Silent, but he could not hit. Billet quickly the other way for Greer. Controlling the traffic, looking for an opening. Rear, in and out, Kent. Unable to grab it, and it will be Hofstra ball. It's uh, by no means a work of art. 10 minutes and 47 seconds. Remaining in the first half, a total of 20 points and a plethora of collisions. From the corner, Richardson, no good. Thompson the rebound. Billet quickly into the front court. Boy, his eyes get big in transition. If I was that size, I wouldn't want to play against a half-court defense either. Another Rutgers turnover, number eight. Neither coach is going to want to use this tape in uh, coaching clinics this summer. Both these teams are really capable of playing terrific basketball. I was impressed that with Rutgers' performance at Florida after the, the game last year in the Jimmy V doubleheader. They went to Gainesville, played them tough. Remember, both teams have not played in 10 days. Here's Billet from long range. No good. Kept alive by Greer. So they could still, be, could still be working out the cobwebs. Yeah, that's true. Greer has missed practice this week with a sprained right ankle. He was uh, bouncing around pretty good today. You take Greer and Sherrod out of that uh, perimeter for Rutgers, they're in trouble. He took a real chance there. If he had not been a half a step closer to that ball, Hernandez would have been laying it up at the other end. He was the safety man in Gamble. Greer remains in the game. Rutgers trailing Hofstra by six. We've played ten and a half minutes. The Scarlet Knights have scored seven points. They've gone over five minutes without scoring. Mitch Dabney doing at the top of the key with the ball. Five on the shot clock. Greer driving. And he will head to the free throw line. That ankle looks all right. That was vintage Greer. Jeff Greer as a slasher came into this game averaging 14 points and five boards, but they were just a diff. Takes it strong. That's one of the few times somebody went for the basket and it did not become a charge. Lars Grubler called for the personal his first. Jeff Greer 65% from the free throw line out of Cardinal Hayes High School here in Manhattan. One of the disappointing losses for Rutgers this year was the St. Joe's of Philadelphia at home. But Greer had 21 in that game, and uh, it's just one of those that you hate to let those non-conference games and lose them on your home floor. So 1-2-2 two, two, really matching up. It protects Billet and his size at the head of the key. Rubler bottled up, kept alive by Sila. And he was fouled. Mike Thompson. Call for the foul, so Abdu Sila will head to the free throw line. DePaul transfer, speaks four languages. He can mutter to the official and probably get away with it. Kevin Bannon could not get away with it earlier. <laughs> yeah, he probably went with that uh, the straight jersey. He and these guys can uh, certainly discern that. Bannon's got great knees. You ever notice he's over there like Johnny Bench? See, the whole game he's like that. I'd need three and one oil. You know, it's, it's to get up for a timeout. 
We'll see how his knees feel in 20 years. Yeah, yeah. There aren't going to be many 20-year coaches anymore. That's just an observation. Five point Hofstra lead. Tough D by Apodaca. Greer setting up Gabney. Nice touch. Yes. Dribble penetration, kick out the big guy with a smooth stroke. Hofstra 14, Rutgers 11. Richardson for Hernandez, pulls it back out over Thompson. Oh. Hernandez on the fadeaway. Whoa, that's a big time shot. Averaging 15, but it's his versatility. The assist, he had to sit down a long time in the second half in that St. John's game. And that was made it even more impressive that Hofstra could survive it. Billet on the second effort. Getting back to Hernandez, Bucky. You are not going to replace Speedy Claxton, but Hernandez has done a very nice job. Yeah, he's just a, a real tough, solid kid. Boy, can he defend. Richardson no good from three. Reaching called on Lars Grubler. Well, at 270, when he reaches in, it's with authority. Todd Billett to the free throw line. Terrific free throw shooter, 83% last season. I'm sure Kevin Bannon sitting over there saying, you know, we haven't done anything right. And we're in it. Time to get to the half to get Sherrod back in there. Kent has been a non factor. I mean, it's just nothing going right for the Scarlet Knights, and they're hanging around. Billet misses the front end of the one and one. And it's rebounded by Richardson. As you watch both of these teams, that 10 day layoff for each uh, does become a Real good observation. And Hofstra coming off their huge victory over St. John's. First victory in 20 all-time meetings between the Pride and the Red Storm. Hernandez from the corner. Boy, Norman Richardson doing a nice job finding him, too, on the baseline. Richardson lets the game come to him, except in the second half. And he's been prone to take him over. leading Rutgers by five. Jeff Greer from three. His second three-point field goal tonight. Todd Bellett again making that happen. The fear of his penetration. Oh. Apodaca looking underneath. And it deflected out off Gabby of Rutgers. A timeout with 6.35 remaining in the first half. Hofstra's lead cut to two. It's, it's the real deal. It's right in your face. It's like boof. So it's, it's not about steering you this way or that. It's, it's not about blocking you from, from where you want to go. It's a two-way street, but not for them to get into you. I know it's not spam. I can't stand spam. Really? It, it kind of like, good. It's like, I know, it kind of like transports you into a different yeah. world. And plus you can yeah. play games on it. <laughs> games. Right there. You get on it, you get in there, and then it's just like, bam, right in your face. <laughs> I refuse, I refuse to lose, to be average, to fail. I refuse to die, to be afraid. I refuse to be taken. I refuse. Wright said it best, if you have great guards, anything is possible. Hernandez there with a big time move, pull away three. He only has six points, but he's trying to guard Billet. Todd Billet makes the turn on him, gets in the middle, under control. Watch this, offensive rebound, stick back for the big guy at six foot. There's Hernandez again on the baseline. 
great follow through. He's got six points on those two, three. Hey, here's Billet again. We said he had seven assists in the last game. He's creative, gets in the gap, finds Greer, Greer drills it. Six points for Jason Hernandez. Norman Richardson also has six, leading the way for Hofstra. Jeff Greer, the high point man for Rutgers with eight. Hernandez looks to make a move on Greer. Roberto Gittins turns it over. Well, it's not pretty, but I'll tell you, both of these teams are really working at the defensive end. They'd probably be shooting better, but they got skin under their fingernails from the D. Sean Aksani, number 32, is in the game for Rutgers. This is Aksani. Out for Daphne. He shows the nice touch again. I asked what he was doing at the head of the key, handling the ball a bit ago. He looks comfortable out there shooting, but not ball handling. So we are tied at 18. The Scarlet Knights have fought their way back from a six-point deficit. Hernandez spinning on Thompson. Dabney comes over to help out. Richardson for Apodaca. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how he even saw the basket. He was covered with black jerseys. Looked like a full eclipse. But somehow he got that ball through the cracks. A rainbow shot. Tough shot. I'm not sure he did see the basket. <laughs> Jay Wright says he's a born scorer. And uh, those guys make those kind of shots. Five points for Apodaca. Two-point Hofstra lead as we approach five minutes remaining in the half. Billet pulls up. Does not get the roll. Silent with a strong rebound. Traveling is the call on Apodaca. Good spin move inside by Richardson. Finds Apodaca. Look at that. Three dark jerseys, and out of it comes a soft, high, floating shot. Nothing but nylon. I think people forget he's left-handed, too. Only a sophomore. Jeff Greer from three, no good. Springfield, the rebound. Both teams desperately want to run. They're both in plan B with this half court. Neither of them want to be mired in it, but neither has, so far, has uh, just been able to control the boards, play enough defense to get the, uh, the stops to run. Apodaca will throw in. Richardson, off the back of the rim, kept alive by Gittens. And Richardson lost it. Boy, after a hot start, we talked about Richardson's uh, ineffectiveness in the first half and his propensity to take over games in the second half. He hit two big shots early, and it looked like uh, he was going to be off and running, but he has cooled, and the Rutgers defense has had something to do with that. And Shawnee rejected by Springfield. Doug well, Springfield had 10 block shots in one game last year for Hofstra. Now Billet quickly into the front court. Billet splitting through. Came up short. And the foul called on Akshani. Check that, it's Dabney. Called for his first with 4.02 remaining. In the first half, Hofstra leading by two. Todd Billett in the first half, Bucky, just three of ten from the field. Most of them have been extraordinary looks. In fact, one of his field goals, as we just pointed out in a highlight, was, uh, was an offensive stick back. But he's had good looks. He hasn't forced a thing. And again, going back to Norman Richardson, after hitting two quick ones, he has really kind of stepped back, moving the ball. He's found Hernandez a couple of times. Uh, neither one of these teams really comfortable mired in this trench warfare. Hits both free throws and will sit down, replaced by Lars Grubler. Rutgers has committed 10 fouls already. Hofstra, seven, so going down the stretch here. Free throws could be a factor. Somebody's going to want to get a lead and a little breathing space here at the half. Billy. 
Allen. Yeah. All for Palmer. Yeah. He turns it over. Boy, Hernandez is in his shirt. Good move, good D. At a four-point, Hofstra lead. The Knicks jam on MSG. Free and company are at the Garden to battle Elton Brand and the Bulls after MCS Cannon Knicks game night. Friday night, only on MSG. And Rutgers meet in last year's holiday festival semifinals, but they got together in the preseason NIT two seasons ago. A game won by Rutgers, 58-45. This one was in Piscataway. Joel Salvi, who was a very emotional player, coming back to stuff that one. Boy, Rutgers really plays well in that building. And then Jeff Billet, Todd's brother, setting up Jeff Greer. And he's now on the bench in the coat and tie. And Greer rolls on in his senior year. This is the third year in a row these teams are playing the fifth time in history. All-time series, two apiece. Here's Greer from Todd Billick. No good, chased down by Kent. Oh, Kent showing some real quickness running that down. Rutgers trailing by four. Kent backing his way in on Springfield. Nice move. It may be playing Rutgers. Your best defense is to send him to the foul line. He is. He just has to overcome that free throw shooting. Because with his good moves and post size, you're going to give it to him and he's going to get fouled. You may as well foul him. Why not? It's a way to get a stop. Percentage is with you. Ten on the shot clock. Apodaca thought he was fouled by Thompson. Thompson a starter at the beginning of the season for Rutgers. Has been replaced uh, by the freshman who's gotten a lot of time. Mike Sherrod made a big difference in that Rutgers team. They went smaller, but they got lots quicker. Sherrod currently on the bench with the three early fouls. Looks like Rutgers here with just a little over two minutes ago trying to establish something inside. And they're one for two. Two minutes to play, first half. Hofstra leading by two, 22-20. And on the shot clock, Richardson in the corner, over Dabney, hits from three. Oh, that perimeter. Hernandez, Apodaca, and Richardson is really loaded offensively. Pass underneath for Dabney. Richardson pulled it down and was fouled by Eugene Dabney. Dabney's second personal foul. Going down inside again, trying to establish the inside. Kicks out. Richardson back with the stroke. Now gets a chance to add, to step into the free throw line. Richardson, Richardson, 16 a game, five boards, and very, very instrumental, having won MVP honors in the last two ECAC holiday festivals. But first, this team's got to win the tournament. He scored 23 in last year's holiday festival victory over Rutgers. Has 10 points here tonight. The fifth ever two-time holiday festival most valuable player. Well, looking at uh, David Russell and Chris Mullen, that's when uh, St. John, this used to be the St. John's Invitational. Now it's become the Hofstra Invitational. Working on the third leg. 30-second timeout called by Rutgers head coach Kevin Bannon. New York Rangers hockey on MSG. Messier and the Blue Shirts are in Carolina to battle the Hurricanes after Geico Rangers game night. Wednesday night only on MSG.
Here's by six, great first half. They pride the preseason favorites of the American East Conference. They won the American East last season. They advanced to the NCAA tournament where they lost in the opening round to Oklahoma State. They've already lost one game in the league to Delaware, but uh, right now everyone's excited about Hofstra and their success outside of the conference. Uh, going back to the big win early with St. John's the first time in 20 opportunities 10 days ago, but you can't live on anything very long in this business. The loss to Delaware ended Hofstra's 26-game home court winning streak. And Hofstra, along with three other America East members, will leave in 2003 or perhaps sooner and join the Colonial Athletic Association. Well, just hearing a conversation, somewhat controversial, uh, whether Hofstra should really do that, but uh, uh, I, I don't know. They're, they have made the commitment to do it. Whether Jay Wright is there with uh, his coaching pedigree and success at Hofstra, uh, that's something I wouldn't bet on. He was funny until he said, you know, his kids are used to now coming to the garden and winning. He said he's been there seven years and he remembers coming in here and being hammered by the likes of Georgia Tech and St. John's and those people. So he's, he's, he is certainly not overconfident, but he said there's a great deal of confidence in his kids and well, they should have it because they've done well here. His senior class and four of the five starters as seniors have won 19, 22 and 24 games. And they're what, five and two here in the garden? Five and two here at the garden. <laughs> Including victories in the last two holiday festivals. Under a minute to play first half, Hofstra leading by five. The winner of this game will advance and meet Penn State tomorrow night for the championship. Seven on the shot clock. Danny Walker looking for Springfield, but there are also three Rutgers players in the paint. Yeah, Springfield's got to come to meet that pass. You know it's going to be contested in the paint. This is a real psychological play right here for Rutgers. They struggled all night. Greer will go to the line. First personal on Apodaca coming up. At the half, Hofstra goes for the three-peat here at the ECAC Holiday Festival Sports Desk with Bill Daughtry. All the day's scores and highlights. And first half stats and highlights as well from the Hofstra Pride and the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Kevin Bannon, uh, whatever he said to get that technical, uh, it, it, you know, it was expensive. He got a technical, but you know what? It seems to have helped to see. Uh, it's about that time in the first half that they uh, began to loosen up uh, offensively. Certainly Todd Billett had enough good looks for a sizable Rutgers lead, and he couldn't get him down. And uh, here, here's Rutgers hanging around again, uh, having really struggled with foul trouble and missed open shots. So if they can uh, get a little bump here right at the end, should give them a real lift. Jeff Breer to the line, eight points. Three of three from the line. Richardson rebounds the miss. And now Hofstra with 15 seconds remaining in the half. Shot clock turned off with a four point lead. Apodaca rebounded by Thompson. Five seconds. Here comes Greer, two seconds. Billet with a cramp. And Hofstra will head into the locker room with a four-point lead at the half. Uninspiring, certainly not pretty. A very hard-fought first half. I like Rutgers' position in the fact that they just never got anything on track and were able to hang around. Hofstra, a dangerous club, a confident club, but both teams need to do something defensively to get out in transition. Hofstra with a four-point lead as we send it across to Mike Hill. You know, uh, Coach Jay Wright, Jay, it looks like in the first half, both teams could have used a little WD-40. You guys were a little rusty <laughs> ten days off. Uh, you give me an excuse for that, a little rustiness? <laughs> 
yeah, we, we uh, I think, uh, I don't know about them, but we could execute a little bit better offensively, I can tell you that. What do you want to do in the, in the second half? you want to increase the pace a little bit more? Yeah, we, we do. Want, uh, this is not our pace. You know, we, we like to get it up and down a little bit. We also need to get the ball inside a little bit more. And they're doing a good job in their matchup, keeping it out of the middle. But uh, we got we to gotta get it inside. All right, Jay, good luck in the thanks. second half. Back to you, Kenny. All right, thanks very much, Mike. Thanks, Jay. Four-point lead at the half for the Hofstra Pride, 26-22 over the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Two of the ECAC Holiday Festival brought to you by Foot Locker. At the half, it's the Hofstra Pride, Jay Wright's crew, leading by four, 26-22. Now with point guard Speedy Claxton now playing in the NBA with the Philadelphia 76ers, there were plenty of questions coming in about the Hofstra Pride. But at 6-2 and two and a big win over St. John's already this season, even without Speedy, it's going to be tough to slow the pride down, especially in this tournament. No question the biggest weekend in the basketball program's history. The Hofstra Flying Dutchman have arrived. The Hofstra portion of the crowd on its feet as the Flying Dutchman will win their second consecutive holiday festival title and take the championship trophy back to Hempstead, Long Island. After winning the holiday festival the past two years, Jay Wright and Hofstra are in search of the trifecta this season. Ever since the first one, uh, it just it was like a dream, you know, going out there and playing out on, that, on the floor. Uh, it was unbelievable, and now to be going back for our third time, it's just uh, we have a comfort playing in the garden now, you know. It's a great honor just to win two in a row, and to, to, to be able to compete for a third title in that prestigious tournament is, is a great feeling, and it, uh, it just tells you how long our, our, our program has, has come over the years. After last year's title, Hofstra went on to win 19 of the next 21 games, including three straight in the America East Conference Tournament, beating their arch-rival Delaware in a championship game and advancing to the NCAA Tourney for the first time since 1977. They lost to Oklahoma State, but they test with my man, Billy D. Bill Daughtry. Basketball. All right, thanks very much, Mike. As we get set to begin the second half, Hofstra leading by four, 26-22. Apodaca Hernandez in the backcourt with Gittins, Richardson, and Springfield. For the pride, Richardson had his shot. Altered by Dabney, kept alive by Gittins, but he stepped out of bounds. Kevin Bannon starting Mike Sherrod with three fouls in the second half. So he's going back to his original lineup. And I really do think that part of that is the desire to put speed on the floor and try to get in more of a transition game. Both of these coaches, uh, this is definitely plan B in a half-court battle. And Sherrod and his shot blocked by Roberto Gittins from behind. Well, the defense is still good. Richardson takes it all the way but could not hit. And a foul called against Hofstra on the rebound. Norman Richardson, who has been a uh, takeover guy in the second half, had a good first half. Three for seven and two for four from the three-point line. If his uh, mode of operation uh, holds up, we can look for a stellar second half as he seeks his quest of the third straight MVP in this event. The foul was called on Springfield, his third. Rashawn Kent. A mountain of a man, and he's got quick feet and hops. Kent now with six points, pulling Rutgers within two. The Scarlet Knights have never led in tonight's game. We have had only one time. We could have our second right here. Billy, all the way. At quick hands to quick feet. Rashad Kent getting the steal in the post, and I thought he was going to get it back from Billet and stuff it. Todd now three for 12, and one of those, well, one is a layup, and the other is that offensive stick back that he got off the front of the rim. He's 0 for 5 from three-point land. Apodaca showing the nice touch from the outside. One smooth lefty. Hostra extending their defense a little, but it's more token. I'm looking for more traps, more gambling, something to get this game in a, in a much faster pace. Rutgers coach Kevin Bannon, like he told our Mike Hill, that Billet was rushing things in the first half. 
part of that is that when you get logged in that half court game and you're small, it makes you stretch. And I think the 10 day layoff that you pointed out, Ken, had something to do with it too. But the Barnacles ought to be off now. Rutgers has fought their way back into a tie. This should be Norman Richardson time if you're a Hofstra fan. Springfield out for Apodaca. Richardson. This is Springfield. Richardson from three off the back of the rim. Kept alive at 35. Springfield is fouled by Kent. Big offensive rebound. Greg Springfield, just a 6'9 New Yorker. Very impressive on that stick back. Transfer from Western Kentucky. He likes it in there. He had 10 blocks against New Mexico. 10 blocks. Whew, that's a career for some guys. He had one block in the first half tonight out of LaSalle Academy. In Manhattan, Springfield, averaging six and a half points per game, has not scored yet tonight. Hofstra shot 45% from the field in the first half. Rutgers only 33%, rebounding pretty even. Turnovers the same. Pretty even, yep. It was, it was a lackluster performance both ways. One team must step up, and the winner will take on Penn State tomorrow night. The loser draws Princeton in the consolation game. A shot at the Big Ten. Billet watched by Apodaca. Three minutes in, second half. High to 28. Ten on the shot clock. Kent draws the foul. Roberto Gittens called for his third. So Gittens and Springfield each have picked up their third personal foul. Sherrod playing with three personals. Here's Billet. After Sherrod and now Greer. Apodaca doing a nice job on Billet. Abney was blocked, and that is number four on Greg Springfield. Jay Wright making a move. I think he's going to go to the big, big guy, Lars Rubler. Rubler has to be careful. He has two fouls. Yeah, but, uh, he, you know, it, you're, you're fighting for superiority right now. The little people take over the game but three, four minutes ago. Your big guy's got to establish that lead for you. you got to come with your best, especially the first several minutes of this second half. Yeah. Hernandez, what a defender. He just couldn't shake Jason Hernandez. Not a good night at all for Mike Sherrod, the rookie from, from New York City in here in his first big. He's been playing so well. The 10th Rutgers turnover of the game. Grubler. Lars Grubler gets the roll. A guy that, that big get that softer roll. Good move. Back on top by two. Still soft pressure. Haven't done much trapping. Those calculated risks. Sherrod into the paint. Turns it over. Here comes Apodaca. Apodaca takes it all the way and will head to the free throw line. Defense now beginning to generate some transition for the pride of Hofstra. Both of these teams with three excellent perimeter players, but they haven't been able to show their wares. That was uh, just another unforced error. The lefty, Apodaca, trying to get an angle to get that shot up on the board. I was expecting a little spin move to come back. Hofstra now 0 for 3 from the foul line of the second half. <laughs> it's, it has not been pretty. Oh, for four. 
We told you about Rutgers and their foul shooting problems. Hofstra coming in only 66 percent. 0 for 4 in the second half tonight. They lead by just two. Somebody's got to win this game. You sure? Yes. Sherrod driving on Gruber. Well, maybe that'll break Mike Sherrod loose a little bit. It's been they only got uh, six minutes in the first half. He's certainly rested. We picked up the three early fouls. Tied at 30. Apodaca off the back of the rim. Rebounded by Roberto Gittins. A new 35 for Hofstra. Norman Richardson from three. Short. Rebounded by Apodaca. It's good. And the foul. Norman Richardson's three barely caught iron and went straight down. Rick Apodaca, the 6'3 sophomore, got it on a short hop and stuck it right up. Here's Watts, just barely catches. Apodaca goes up, gets the lead, gets the contact on Eugene Dabney, and that's his third, second, third. Replaced by Kareem Wright. Now 0 for 5 in the second half from the line. Abadaka has missed three. Springfield two. Taking a Shaquille O'Neal correspondence course on free throw shooting. There's that random trap. Billet from three. Now 0 for 6 from downtown. Hernandez chasing. Tries to throw it out of bounds off Billet, but Billet. Good hands, and then he's fouled <laughs> on the other end by Apodaca. <laughs> Good effort. Good effort by Apodaca. Billet had no idea he was coming. Hofstra <laughs> leading by two. The Knicks jam on MSG. Free and company are at the Garden to battle Elton Brand and the Bulls after MCS Cannon Knicks game night. Friday night, only on MSG. Looking to save more and spend less this holiday season? With the Chrysler Holiday Event, you can do just that. Because right now, let's see for St. John's basketball as Omar Cook and the Red Storm take on the Dons of San Francisco. Tip off set for 2 p.m. The Red Storm and the Dons Saturday on MSG. Five Big East teams in the top 25 of the coaches ball this week. Great. Yep. They start the war next week, though. Yep. Conference play. Women and children out of the way. Hofstra looking for their third consecutive victory over a Big East opponent. Went over Rutgers last year and St. John's in their last game. Traveling is the call on Kareem Wright. Both these teams desperately want to play well and they just can't pull it off. 12 Rutgers turnovers. Hofstra has turned the ball over 13 times. Hofstra two-point lead. Rutgers staying with their matchup. Hofstra staying with their man-for-man. -man. No one has really tried to gamble with some half-court traps. Something to shake this with. Down on the shot clock. Hernandez using the screen set by Gittins. Apodaca with four on the 35. Apodaca getting through somehow. The dribble penetration, the way these teams are playing right now, in, in order to get a little hop in the offense, we've got to see more dribble penetration. Neither team is hitting their outside shots. We create something inside. Nice move. Mike Sherrod pulls Rutgers back within two. Apodaca, the high point man for the Pride with 11. Richardson has 10 points, all 10 coming in the first half. Shot clock down to 10. Hernandez for Richardson. Richardson 
That's a two-point attempt. His foot is on the line. Richardson with his first basket of the second half. But good news for the Pride fans. Mr. Second Half finally uh, showing some life after an exceptionally good first half. 12 for Richardson. Hofstra up by four. Kevin Bannon recalling this uh, ECAC Holiday Festival game last year said, we were doing great. We had them. And uh, all of a sudden, Richardson went off and we were out of it. Hernandez from three. Oh. Knocked out of bounds by Grubler. Grubler at 270 and Kareem Wright at 285 make for hazardous passes through the lane down there. Two double wides camped in there. Neither team can establish an inside game. Neither team has hit from the perimeter. This one four high should give lots of staggered screens. Here comes Billet off the staggered screen. Billet from three, now 0 for 7. And it will be Hofstra basketball, but first, a timeout with the Pride leading the Scarlet Knights by four. It's, it's the real deal. It's right in your face. It's like, boo. So it's, it's not about steering you this way or that. It's, it's not about blocking you from... Right there. You get on it, you get in there, and then it's just like, bam, right in your face. <laughs> Official sponsor of the New York Knicks. Back at Madison Square Garden, four point lead for Hofstra over Rutgers. The winner of this game will take on the Penn State Nittany Lions, who defeated Princeton in the opener. This is Princeton's Andre Logan scoring two of his career high 19 points, but it was the Joe Crispin show for the Nittany Lions. Andre Logan, the one bright light for Princeton. This young man. Joe Crispin put on a remarkable performance, doing everything and doing it well. He just put the Nittany Lions on his back and carried them to the finals. Coach Jerry Dunn doing a little scouting in the second half. Neither team, uh, I mean, you just don't have time to get ready. These are back to back. Penn State, six consecutive victories, 8-1 on the season. They received votes in both polls again this week. This could they be await the winner. Yep, this could be a breakthrough game for them. Impressive win at Kentucky, impressive win over Temple, but their next game after the ECAC Holiday Festival. Wow, tough shot. The lefty going to the right as they go to Michigan State, the newly crowned nation's number one team in East Lansing. Hello. Rick Apodaca's second three-point field goal extending Hofstra's lead to seven. This is the biggest lead of the game for the Pride. 39-32, shot clock winding down. Now it's seven. Rear off the mark, rebounded by Hernandez. Richardson underneath for Gittins, and he was fouled by Kareem Wright. Great pass, just a great pass, and Gittins showing remarkable hands. That ball came off the floor. That was a short hop. Again, Richardson letting the play come to him. Githens making a tough catch. Got position. Well, let's see if somebody can hit some free throws here. Boy, Githens had a huge game against St. John's. 13 points, 9 boards in 38 minutes. Oh, Oscar now 0 for 6 in the second half. <laughs> Benevolence at Christmas is one thing, but this is absurd. They call them free throws. You know, when the game was originally designed, that a free throw was worth three points. That may be what we have to do to get players to take them seriously. 0 for 7. Hofstra from the line since halftime. 0 for 7. 
and they might win. Lars Grubler called for his third personal foul. Stellar free throw shooting. Rutgers 4 for 9. Hofstra 5 for 15. And 0 for 7 in the second half. Apodaca ahead of the field. I'm surprised the crowd didn't holler, you can't dunk. You can't dunk. I believe he can. I think he thought better of it. 7-0 run by Hofstra. And they now lead Rutgers by nine. Big second half for Rick Apodaca. 11 of his 16 points here in the second. Kenny's also doing a terrific job defensively. He's either had a billet uh, or, or Sherrod. Uh, occasionally he's been off on Greer, but he has played well at both ends of the floor. He has outscored Rutgers in the second half, 11-10. <laughs> And there is a salient stat. One shy of his season high, 17 points against Florida International. His career high, 22 last season against New Hampshire. He has 16 points tonight. The all-time leading scorer in Hudson County in New Jersey out of North Bergen High School. Yeah, in that, going back to that St. John's game, which may be a breakout game for him with 14 points. He had six assists and uh, only one turnover and several steals. Three steals, in fact. It was a stellar floor game. Billet keeps on shooting. This time he hits. He's got to get hot. Coach Bannon talked about him hurrying. He needs to hurry. Four for 16. My goodness. The half coach Bannon said uh, two for 11. We, we just we've never seen that. We don't understand that. Always two for five in the second half. That's Half better. a percentage up. That's better. Apodaca off the front of the rim. Having a hard time going right there. Fortunately, Jeff Bullock's not very large. He's able to get it over him. Bullock from three. And he looked over at the bench to Bannon and said, I'm back. His first three-point field goal of the game, putting Rutgers within four. As we approach nine minutes remaining in the second half from Madison Square Garden. Jay right over there, just shaking his head. We're missing all those free throws. We should have buried these guys, taken them out of it. They're back. Richardson to a wide open Danny Walker. No good. And the rebound knocked out of bounds. Basketball as Jason Hernandez checks back in, replacing Rick Apodaca, who sits down with 16 points. Well, I think it's a good substitution. I think working as hard as he had been at both ends of the floor, a couple of those shots looked a little fatigued, looked a little loose. He'll be back in, be assured. Now it's Hernandez on both. But Bella now has his confidence. He's hit his last two. It's almost a box and one. Get all alone on the feed from Thompson. A 7 0 run by the Scarlet Knights. They trailed by nine moments ago. It's now a two point game. Boy, just about the time they're giving uh, the Scarlet Knights last rights. Here they come. But Hofstra, if they get away, clearly, four free throw shooting and a chance to really put the ice on the corpse and they were unable to do it and now Rutgers is growing. Billet has his confidence. They're developing an inside game for Rashad Kent. Here's where coming down the stretch see if uh, Jay Wright does not consider fouling Rashad Kent at crucial times to send him to the line. Especially with the offensive power now being generated by the Scarlet Knights. That's a good defensive option. Rutgers may want to foul some of the Hofstra players as well, considering the pride have gone 0 for 7 from the line in the second half. They don't, yeah, yeah. It's been a bizarre game, absolutely bizarre. It's almost like a game at, uh, in November. And here are two teams getting ready to go into their 
respective conference play and have already had some good success in the early season. Richardson's riding on Greer. Throws it back out to Hernandez. That matchup's getting a lot more aggressive. Scarlet Knights really taking some chances now, trying to create some transition. Eight on the shot clock. Walker driving baseline. Well, that is, I guess, is in foul trouble because he clearly made no effort and gave that baseline up. Walker, a high school teammate of Rutgers, Mike Sherrod, at Paul Rolson in Brooklyn. Eugene Cadney answers on the other end. Well, this crowd was snoozing. Now they're in it, both sides. Apodaca getting set to check back in. Waiting at the scorer's table. With Hostra leading by two. Hernandez from three. Off the side of the rim. And now Apodaca will check back in. So will Rutgers' Mike Sherrod. But first, the timeout. Rutgers battling back. They trail by nine. Now down by just two. Danny Walker gets his first two of the game. Going baseline. Gets his ticket punched by Eugene Dabney. But Dabney responds at the other end. Dribble penetration to Rashad Kent. Good interior passing. And Eugene Dabney cashes in for his eighth point. And suddenly, both of these teams have, uh, have a pulse and are attacking each other and at least finishing. It's been a very bizarre, frustrating game. And if Hostler should not win this game, Jay Wright's going to look right at those free throws and say, we had them and we let them up. They also need to look at Norman Richardson. This is his time. He's proven it. Gerard bottled up. And he was fouled. Danny Walker called for his second. Why you have a two-point game with seven minutes to go? They got there by a circuitous route, both of them. But uh, right now it's tight. Both teams, 17 of 39 from the field, 44 percent. Another Rutgers turnover. Norman Richardson, find him. He's coming back into the game. Don't pass it to him out there. Nope. He's good, but he's not that good. Walker with 15 on the shot clock. Foul call to the outside against Billet. He is second. As Norman Richardson checks back in. He will replace Danny Walker. Off the inbounds, Richardson draws the foul. Greer, all for his fourth. Boy, he went to sleep. Richardson wanting that ball now. It's crunch time, and he has proven it time and time again. Look for Hofstra to go to him, and look for him to want it more. He's really let the game come to him today. 0 for 8. Hofstra from the line in the second half. Oh for nine. Jay Wright cannot believe it. Hofstra with a two-point lead. 0 for nine from the free throw line in the second half. We mentioned earlier, Rutgers missed 12 in a row in their last game. Here's Richardson off the steal, takes it over the way, and was fouled by Phillips. Todd Billet made two mistakes there. One, he threw a one-handed pass. He couldn't pull it back. It was picked off, and then he got in so deep, he couldn't make the coverage, and that basket just may get Norman Richardson off because he has not been in the flow. And Billet, you got it. You got it. No, no. If you're going to foul, it's got to be a hard foul. Finally, Hofstra's first successful free throw 
Yeah, that, that should have never happened. He should have had to go to the line and make two. Bill just give him a little brush foul, setting up the three-point play. Dabney strong on the boards, and he will go to the line. Foul by Lars Grubler. It's Grubler's fourth. <laughs> Who's, who's excited? Greg Springfield coming in with his warm-up shirt on. I guess if he's in foul trouble, he does not want them to be able to see his number. Excellent point. He has four personal fouls, as does Grubler, who sits down. The Rutgers, Greer with four. Phillip, Gabney, Sherrod, and Wright, all with three. Gabney completes the three-point play, pulling Rutgers back within two. Amazing game. Rutgers has never left. Richardson across. Hernandez. Down low for Springfield. 5.45 remaining. Richardson. Battle for the rebound. Pulled down by Springfield. Wants to go back up. Instead, gets it out to Hernandez. Return for Springfield. He blows the stuff attempt. They want to put that warm-up jersey back on. Sarai <laughs> so ties the game. 46. So high school, one for ten from the line and a missed stuff attempt in the second half. Boy, right. Hernan yeah, I'd be happy. Jason Hernandez made such a great pass into Greg Springfield, and uh, he banged that uh, would-be tomahawk dunk off the back of the rim, and it turned into transition for the Scarlet Knights. Rutgers looking for their first lead of the night. Mike Sherrod better be careful with Jason Hernandez on him. Dabney gives the Scarlet Knights their first lead. Oscar calls timeout. A 30-second timeout with 4.27. Remaining with 427 remaining Hofstra has two timeouts left has committed seven fouls Rutgers. Oh, there's the that has really typifies this night as well in addition to poor free throw shooting I mean he was up there all by himself not a nudge and every time in the last few minutes that the mistake has been made by Hofstra Rutgers has been able to generate transition. Abney, big in the second half. That's 10 points for him. 7-0 run for the Scarlet Knights. Dabney off the bench. The high point score for Rutgers with 13. Storylines abundant in this game. Gee whiz. A scriptwriter would go crazy trying to come up with all of these. Apataka, no good. Rebounded by Greer. Missed stunks, missed free throws. Apataka, you'd bet on him. He was wide open, good touch. Rutgers clearly playing with a lot more enthusiasm and confidence right now. Under four minutes remaining, Greer from three off the mark. Rubler, the rebound. Hofstra looking to tie. Roberto Gittins across. Norman Richardson off the front of the ring. Strong rebound and put back by Gittins. And the foul will go to the line. The good news is a field goal. The bad news is Hofstra's gone to the line. Such a strong move. Roberto Gittins dishes over. And there's the closer, Norman Richardson, catches Iron Gittins back in the play and finishes. Gittins looking for a career point number 1,000. He's got it. And it gives Hofstra. A one-point lead with 3.34 remaining. 
Roberto Gittens completes the three-point play. Hofstra back on top. I refuse. I refuse to lose. To be average. To fail. Next on MSG Sports Desk with Bill Godfrey. Nets Hawks highlights. The Jets pack up following the disappointing end to their season. And Giants running back Tiki Barber in the studio with Jay Glazer. That's coming up next on MSG Sports Desk, or should I say the University of Virginia's Tiki Barber. <laughs> yes, yeah, you could say that. As uh, you came up to New York from ACC country. Yeah, and it's cold down there too, Ken. You know, interesting looking at Rutgers, they, they have some experience at coming back. They were down at Princeton, 25 to 18, which was a similar uh, tempo and result at Princeton, and were able to come back and win that one 46-44. But this is not Princeton. This is a much more talented team than Hofstra. Rubler nearly came up with the steal. Dabney keeps it alive. 315 remaining, 15 on the shot clock. Billick guarded tightly by Apodaca. Couple of, couple of very good sophomores. Greer call for traveling. Kevin Bannon has to be careful. He already has one technical foul. Here's the move down the baseline. Greer thought he got bumped. No call, except the walk. Wide open, Hernandez. No good. Grubler tapped it back out. Hofstra likes to do that on misses. Grubler, I can't believe how much he's improved. For the most part, he just kind of runs around in there setting screens. But he comes up with big four. He gets his hands on a lot of things. Very mobile for 270. Played in 18 games last year as a freshman. He's been solid here tonight. Shot clock down to 10. Hofstra with a one-point lead. Apodaca across. Richardson from three. No good. An air ball. Rebounded by Dabney. Well, the Hofstra closer struggling tonight. He's had his looks. He's had his opportunities. He reversed his recent trend. He's been in a bit of a slump. But we talked about how he struggled in the first half, shooting only 25%, coming back to shoot 65 in the second half. Tonight, he led the pride with 10 at the half and just hasn't been able to get it on track. And they need him, and they need him now. I remember last year, the victory over Rutgers in the Holiday Festival semifinals. It was Richardson hitting the big three-point field goals. Down the stretch on the setups from Craig Speedy Claxton. He's getting the looks. He's getting the looks. It's not that uh, Speedy's not feeding them. He's getting the looks. That last one was uh, not even close. He looks tired. Like he ran out of gas in the second half. Richardson 5 of 15 tonight from the field has 15 points. Rutgers with the ball trailing by one. Two minutes to play. Dabney double teamed and the foul called on Apodaca, his third. If Kent touches it, don't be surprised if he's fouled immediately. I would not be surprised. Don't be surprised. It would stop the clock. It would send a very poor free throw shooter to the line. And with Phillip and Greer running around out there, Dabney's scoring well. The, the Scarlet Knight offense has, has been awakened. That is number five on Jeff Greer. Jay Wright huddling his team. Kevin Bannon has to make a decision here. Greer did not score in the second half. Nine points in the first half, five under his average. Greer sits down, and he will be replaced by Mike Thompson. 
Mike Thompson, a starter early in the year at 6'7. Kevin Bannon's going with a little more size, and uh, at this point in the game, it's more game of quickness, ball handling, pressure D if you're behind. Not exactly Mike Thompson's forte. The New Zealander transfer from BYU. The little people dominate the end of the game. They're going to miss Greer. Oscar continues to miss free throws. Gittens could not hit on the front end of the one and one. Oscar still leading by one. Sharon. Ball pops right into the hands of Rick Apodaca. Well, the backcourt now of Hernandez and Apodaca. Much stronger. Much stronger. You gotta like. You gotta like Hofstra's chances at this juncture. The one point lead, one minute, 15 seconds to go, and the strongest backcourt on the floor. They roll the game here. Seven on the shot clock. Hernandez picks up the dribble. Three on the shot clock. Apodaca, double for Kittens, and it was rejected. Daphne got a piece of it. What a great defensive play. A heck of a feed. 30-second timeout called by Kevin Bannon. Scarlet Knights with the basketball trailing by one with 56.2 seconds to play. Watch Eugene Dabney just skyjack that baby from the back. What a great pass. The penetration was there. The dump down was there. Gittens thought he had, he was trying to decide whether to use board or jam. Not so. The eraser took it. Rutgers now with one timeout left. Hofstra with two. Rutgers has committed nine fouls and Hofstra eight. So the next foul Rutgers commits will be a two-shotter. However, in this bizarre game uh, where Hofstra is like, what, one, one for 12? Two for 12 this <laughs> half, for 12? seven for 20 oh, in the my. game. And I still think fouling Rashad Kent if he touches the ball is a good option right now for Jay Wright. 56 seconds to play. The steal by Hernandez, but he threw it out of bounds. Tried to back it off Sherrod and missed. So Rutgers retains possession. They have not scored in nearly four minutes. Billet looking to throw in. Can't find anyone. And calls timeout. The last timeout. Sherrod's got to step up big here. The freshman with his quickness against that very good defensive backcourt for Hofstra. Really has to make a move. Todd Bellett's getting all the attention right now, which gives a little room for Mike Sherrod with a dribble penetration. Here's the play off the inbounds. Hernandez makes a steal. It looked like a good play. It looked like a Sherrod is out of bounds. Watch Hernandez, number 12. Looked like a good play. Not so, it's Rutgers ball. Rutgers could not get the ball in bounds. They used their last timeout. Hofstra has two remaining. 53.7 seconds to go. Hofstra has led most of the way. They have a one point advantage. For the pride, Rick Apodaca, 16 points. Norman Richardson with 15. Eugene Dabney, 13 off the bench for Rutgers. Todd Billett and Jeff Greer, who coming into the game, combined to average 31 per game, held to 20 here tonight. 53.7 seconds. The winner to take on Penn State in the ECAC Holiday Festival Championship tomorrow night. So far, this game, you know, it's, somebody has to win, but neither team has demonstrated that it can finish. You get the feeling that even the winning coach will not be pleased oh. with his team's play following yeah. tonight's game. It's survive in advance. Rutgers trailing by one. Billet looking for the open shot. Off the rim, rebounded by Hernandez. He was fouled by Sherrod as he came down. Number four on Mike Sherrod. So Jason Hernandez, who's an 83% free throw shooter, the best free throw shooter on Hofstra's roster. Hernandez will go to the line 
the Pride 2 of 12 in the second half. Well, if Jay Wright uh, had his druthers as to who he wants on the line with the ball, this is the guy. But uh, it seems like nothing, according to the form, has worked out tonight. Rutgers with no timeouts, as you mentioned. The first by Hernandez is good. So the free throw problems have not rubbed off on Hofstra's best. There are, of course, 35 seconds on the shot clock. There are 36 on the game clock. Negligible. Now Rutgers with no timeouts. Down three. And two huge free throws by Hernandez. Down to 30 seconds. Billet from three. No good. Rebounded by Gittins. Ahead of the field to Richardson. And he slams it home. Giving Hofstra a five-point lead. Sherrod with 15 seconds off balance. Rutgers back within three. Wow, they must foul. Wrong guy. <laughs> but he uh, he really couldn't, Sherrod really couldn't refer that to a committee. Hernandez had the ball, and that's the man that Jay Wright wants to have it. Two huge free throws. Sherrod has fouled out with eight points. Norman Richardson, who has been not much of a factor after the first half, gets a chance to uh, to finish with authority on that breakaway dunk. And Richardson quietly, very quietly, leading all scorers in the game with 17. Amazing. But I still think the guard play of Apodaca and Jason Hernandez. Even Hernandez misses a free throw. Must be a full moon or something. So Hofstra now 4 of 15 in the second half. And Jay Wright calls a 30-second timeout. If Fernandez misses the next free throw, Rutgers can tie it with a three. I'm sure Jay really thought about calling that timeout, noting that, noting that Kevin Bannon didn't have any. Normally, those help the defense. There's a, with 12 seconds, they're going to have to go the length of the floor. It's an instant long shot, and the percentage, you got to stay with Billet, even though he's had a horrendous night. Todd Billet is still with the personnel that's on the floor. Was he five for 19? My goodness. Percentage says he's going to hit it. you got to go with him, but he's going to be wearing either Hernandez or Apodaca or both. If Hernandez hits this next free throw, Rutgers will need two possessions. Hernandez, two of three from the line. Hofstra by four. And the Scarlet Knights commit yet another costly turnover. Their 17th of the game. Another timeout called by Hofstra. So neither team has a timeout remaining with 11.1 seconds to go. Kevin Bannon's out of guards except for Todd Billet. Uh, he does not have another quality backcourt player uh, to put in there. And as as we've oft repeated at this point in the game, your backcourt determines things. And uh, it's been pretty impressive the way that uh, Jason Hernandez and Rick Apodaca. Here's another crucial turnover. Oh, Apodaca has had his hands on so much. He had three steals against St. John's. He's just developing in addition to his God-given talent as a scorer. That young man's building a solid all-around game. Neither team with a timeout. Possession arrow favors Rutgers. It will be Hofstra basketball. 11.1 seconds remaining. The winner will advance to tomorrow's final. Beat the Penn State Nittany Lions. The loser will take on Princeton. Rutgers, ironically, beat Princeton just 12 days ago, 46-44. Hofstra, should they advance, would play Penn State for the first time ever. Those two schools have never met. <laughs> Amazing. Mike Thompson is called for the foul, his first. That's good. No time elapsed. Good. Richardson will shoot two. Rutgers has committed ten team fouls.
Richardson with a, with a big game tomorrow night. Should Hofstra hold on over the final 11 seconds tonight. Could be on his way to his third consecutive Holiday Festival MVP award. Well, oh, he's got to be. He's got to beat Hernandez and Apodaca in his own club. They have played uh, just outstanding hoops tonight. This is Connor Fox, who just checked in, a junior out of Freedon, New Jersey, takes it all the way, and now a foul with 4.3 seconds to play. It's Thompson again, his second. I think Jay Wright would like to have seen that ball move as opposed to waiting for the foul. It's probably academic, but these are the learning situations that you get into um, at this time of the year, pre-conference. Ostra suddenly finds its touch at the line. And it wasn't all bad free throw shooters. The good free throw shooters missed. Richardson has hit four in a row. He now has 20 points. Quietly. That's the operative term you used earlier. Boy, he's draining them now. Two seconds. Here's Dabney. It's over. And the Hofstra Magic at Madison Square Garden continues as the Pride are headed to the Holiday Festival Championship game for the third straight year. For the second year in a row, they defeat Kevin Batten's Rutgers Scarlet Knights. They just, uh, they expect to win here. Jay Wright still a little bit nervous, but uh, whether it's Big Ten, Big East, ACC, his kids expect to win here, and they now go to six and two. Not a well-played game. Uh, Kevin Bennett's got to be real concerned about his club uh, with uh, Hofstra just shooting free throws horrendously. His team was not able to generate offense and get going, and that does not bode well going into the conference. How about the backcourt matchup tomorrow. Hernandez and Apodaca against the Crispin brothers. Wow. I know I'm already looking forward to it. We'll be back. Hofstra moves on. It's, it's the real deal. It's right in your face. It's like, boom. So it's, it's not about steering you this way or that. It's, it's not about blocking you from, from where you want to go. It's a two-way street. In our opener tonight, Joe Crispin led the way. 22 points. Penn State over Princeton. 65-52. And in the nightcap, Hofstra wins their third in a row over a Big East opponent, 58-52 over the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. So that sets up tomorrow's championship game. We will have it for you on MSG at 11 p.m. on tape delay. Following sports desk, it will be Penn State and Hofstra meeting for the first time in their history. Coming up next... MSG Sports Desk, a recap of the day's scores and highlights with Bill Daughtry. And tonight at midnight on Fox Sports Net, the National Sports Report. For Mike Hill and Bucky Waters, Kenny Albert saying so long from Madison Square Garden, Hofstra and Penn State in the final. We'll see you tomorrow night. New York Rangers hot.